Hello there, this is Suzanne in Ohio. If you remember from our last video, I quickly painted these holly leaves and berries, and I said to you I was going to make uh, appliques out of them and pro possibly include them in a little collage on the front of a journal with a bird. And I did that, and now I'm looking around. I wanted to show you the bird. So I did paint a bird that I think will work. And you saw part of that in the uh, video also. So let me show you the bird first. I did finish him up, What all that I want to do. In the last video, I, I just painted a watercolory kind of background. Then I went back and all I did was put some more solid color on the top of him. And I put this green wash on the top and blue wash on the bottom. So hopefully when these appliques of the leaves are done, I will form a little three-dimensional collage here and some other things in the background. So this, um, this technique of making your own appliques has served me well through the years. I've made quite a few. And you might have a reason to want to make some. So let me tell you how I started out here. I, of course, we painted it. And then after it was thoroughly dry, what I did was uh, I put a fusible web in here. And you can see I left that not quite glued down so that you can see it. It's just a piece of something like Wonder Under. And I put the backing on it because... I thinking part of it might show uh, and I wanted to have something on the back. Ordinarily I would just put a piece of muslin but since the leaves are green I chose whatever I had laying around here a piece of green and I even did the back of the berries with green also because that was just too tedious to think that through. It'll be fine. It's a junk journal and it's decorative art so how wrong can you go? All right, so I already uh, stitched around the berries, and I'm going to bring it down here real close so that you can see how they look. I wanted to get my rhythm going here this morning before I made this video, and that's as far as it'll go for me right now. But all I did was free motion stitch around them, and you can see all my strings and everything are still on there. I will trim those away. And places like this is just where I came off of the design and traveled over to the next berry. And there's one of those right here also. I was stitching here and I wanted to go up here. And since I'm cutting all this fabric away, it doesn't matter how I get from one berry to the next. So I'm going to do a couple leaves here for you so that you can see. I'm going to do one really close up and then a couple a little further away. And when that's done, I want you to uh, think about how many appliques you could make and what you could use. It is a fun technique. For no reason at all, I'm just going to choose this leaf here. And the first thing I'm going to do is travel up the middle and put the vein in. And then I'm going to stitch around the edges. It is more simple than it looks. Now, if you've never done free motion sewing before, almost every modern machine will do it. Even my 35-year-old uh, Kenmore will do it. In the older machines, you have an option to drop the feeder feet. And in the newer machines, they give you a little plate to put over your feeder feet. So your feeder feet are inactive either way. And you use a straight stitch and you uh, travel at your own speed. So I'm using a slow speed this morning because I'm not quite in the rhythm. I'm going to put my needle in first where I want it. Then I'm going to lower my dog feet or my presser foot. 
And then I'm just going to stitch um, just back and forth one or two stitches and stop until I get my brain organized. All that will do is secure my thread. Now, if you watch some other educational videos about free motion, they will be much more explanatory than I can be here. My purpose is to show you the next phase in making this journal. I watched a lot of YouTube videos uh, when I learned this. Now, right now I'm asking myself, do I want to take two stitches, two rows of stitching down the middle for a vein or just leave well enough alone and do one? And I will look at it here for a second. It could use two, and if this was going on a wall hanging or a fancy um, fabric art piece, I might do two. But this is going on a journal, so I'm leaving it alone. Now, I'm just going to travel around here, free motion, using my hands to move the fabric around. And ordinarily, I would have a pair of gloves uh, that have little gripper pads on them. But as you all know, if you've been watching me, all my stuff is in storage. So I'm just going to do this the best I can. Now, I am not totally concerned about following this exact paint line because anything outside the stitch, I'm going to cut away. So here goes. I'll stop for a second and reposition my hands. And I'm going to swing it all the way around so that I can have a better view of what I'm doing. And then here at the end, just a few extra stitches done right in place so it sort of ties my thread. Okay, so that's how we're looking. Now I can't sew and look at the screen at the same time, so I hope this machine isn't bouncing the camera all around. But for the next one, I want to back you out a little bit. And then you can get another perspective on it. I hope things are in focus. I've never done anything with my camera on something this close. So I positioned my needle where I want to start, then lowered my presser foot. And again, I'm going to go right up the middle for the vein. Whoops. Now, see, something is pulling my thread. Yes, I was a little tangled up, so it jerked it. So what I'm going to do is stop. I'll stop that, and I'll take this out. Actually, because of the sake of time, I'll take it out at a later date. Because we're not going to finish all these. This is primarily to show you this stage and, okay, got all kinds of things going on here. Cut my thread too close and I'm going to lose it. Should never do that. Don't do what I'm doing. Okay, now a few stitches right in place. And then I'll cut that off. Just so I, 
I don't sew over and over and over. I could always pick it out with a pen, but why create that much work for yourself? Now, the faster you move, the longer your stitches will be. And swinging it around so I can see where I'm going. I want nice little tight stitches, so I'm going to try not to move too fast. I've got my needle in down position. That means every time I stop, my needle will stop in the downward um, position being in the fabric. I like that sometimes because then I won't lose my place. Just a couple of tight stitches there to hold my thread. And there's our leaves and the berries. Okay, so I think that's enough to let you know uh, how this process goes. When I come back again, the next little short video, I'm going to do the bird. So be sure and watch that. And then after that, I will show you how I cut these out and begin to create some kind of a little artistic cluster. All right, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you're stitching along. This video is in Paint With Me series, but get something going. Follow me along and see what kind of techniques I use that you might want to adapt to your work. Thanks for watching. Bye.